Good morning from St. Thomas Episcopal Church and School in San Antonio, Texas. And welcome to morning prayer for the morning of Wednesday, September the 7th. Today, as always, we're praying for the situation in Ukraine. We're praying for peace. We're praying for an end to that conflict. We're praying for peace and unity in the United States. And we're praying for the victims of the flooding in Pakistan. In the Anglican Communion today, we're praying for the Diocese of Madiana and the Church of the Province of Uganda. And in our own diocese this week, we're praying for college ministries everywhere. We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, for David and Rayford, our bishops, and for Mike and Allie, our priests. And as always, from wherever you are, please bring your own concerns, intentions, and thanksgivings to prayer this morning. So let's get started. On page 78, Thus says the High and Lofty One who inhabits eternity, whose name is Holy. I dwell in the high and holy place, and also with the One who has a contrite and humble spirit, to revive the spirit of the humble, and to revive the heart of the contrite. On page 79, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him. On page 82, let's say the Venite. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him. Our Psalms for today, we are in Psalm 119, and so we're going to do three of those sets of eight verses. We're going to begin on page 767 with Zion, and then go through to the next two, which are Heth and Teth. Remember your word to your servant, because you have given me hope. This is my comfort and my trouble, that your promise gives me life. The proud have derided me cruelly, but I have not turned from your law. When I remember your judgments of old, O Lord, I take great comfort. I am filled with a burning rage because of the wicked who forsake your law. Your statutes have been like songs to me wherever I have lived as a stranger. I remember your name in the night, O Lord, and dwell upon your law. This is how it has been with me because I have kept your commandments. You only are my portion, O Lord. I have promised to keep your words. I entreat you with all my heart. Be merciful to me according to your promise. I have considered my ways and turned my feet toward your decrees. I hasten and do not tarry to keep your commandments. Though the cords of the wicked entangle me, I do not forget your law. At midnight I will rise to give you thanks because of your righteous judgments. I am a companion of all who fear you, 
and of those who keep your commandments. The earth, O Lord, is full of your love. Instruct me in your statutes. O Lord, you have dealt graciously with your servant according to your word. Teach me discernment and knowledge, for I have believed in your commandments. Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I keep your word. You are good and you bring forth good. Instruct me in your statutes. The proud have smeared me with lies, but I will keep your commandments with my whole heart. Their heart is gross and fat, but my delight is in your law. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn your statutes. The law of your mouth is dearer to me than thousands in gold and silver. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let's go to our readings for today. In the book of Acts, we are going to finish up chapter 14. We're going to begin with verse 19 and go through verse 28. And so Barnabas and Paul are actually going to several places uh, between yesterday's reading and today. But today for our field trip, we're going to go to Antioch in Syria, which Paul started from there, if you remember, on this missionary journey. And he's going to return back to there. Paul and Barnabas are going to return back to there. And so what about Antioch and Syria? Well, today it's no longer in Syria, but it's not far from it. It's uh, just, just over the border between Syria's, uh, Syria and Turkey. And it's uh, where Turkey kind of, kind of dips down and borders on the, well, much of Turkey borders on the Mediterranean, but this is um, on the border with Syria, and it just sort of dips down there, right at the Mediterranean. And so Antioch was the third largest city in Roman times after Alexandria and Rome itself. And so it was a very large, very prosperous city. It was on the Silk Road, and so it was um, very heavily into the spice trade, a very rich city. So, uh, however, as much of Turkey is, and even today, you'll see there's still issues with, with this, Turkey sits where the um, Asian plain, the Europe Asian plains and the African plates, not plains, plates come together. And so it's very unstable, ge um, seismographically unstable. And so there are a lot of earthquakes. Um, even to this day, there are a lot of earthquakes in, in that area. And so Antioch has, it's not really any longer there. Um, and there, even a lot of the ruins, there are just not a lot of ruins there. I mean, you can still go and see the ruins of Antioch of Syria, but it's, um, there, there are not that many of them there. But in Paul's day, there was, as we have seen in a lot of the other places that he visited, a lot of, uh, there was a very large Jewish population there that had emigrated or, yeah, had emigrated from Jerusalem or from Israel. And so he went to that population. Although, as he did in most of the other places, um, he preached not only to the Jews, but to the Gentiles. And so we are going to, let's see. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention is that, just a second, of course, I put my notes away, that it is very close now to what is Atakya in Turkey, the city of Atakya. And so you can still go and see the ruins of Antioch of Syria, but once the, the spice roads diverged, uh, the, the trade routes diverged, Syria, and then because of earthquakes, Syria became, uh, I'm sorry, not Syria, Antioch of Syria became kind of abandoned. And so currently the city is in ruins. But let's go ahead and read our readings for today. But the Jews came there from Antioch, and this would be Antioch of Pisidia, and Iconium, and won over the crowds. And then they stoned Paul and dragged them out of the city, supposing that he was dead. But when the disciples surrounded him, he got up and went into the city. The next day he went on with Barnabas to Derbe. After they had proclaimed the good news to that city and had made many disciples, they returned to Lystra and then on to Iconium and, and Antioch. And there they strengthened the souls of the disciples and encouraged them to continue in the faith, saying, It is through many persecutions that we must enter the kingdom of God. 
and after they had appointed elders for them in each church, with prayer and fasting, they entrusted them to the Lord, in whom they had come to believe. And then they passed through Pisidia and came to Pamphylia. And when they had spoken the word in Perga, they went down to Italia, and from there they sailed back to Antioch, Antioch of Syria, where they had been commended to the grace of God for the work that they had completed. When they arrived, they called the church together and related all that God had done with them and how he had opened a door of faith for the Gentiles. And they stayed there with the disciples for some time. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our first canticle for today is on page 87, the third song of Isaiah. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has dawned upon you. For behold, darkness covers the land, deep gloom enshrouds the peoples. But over you the Lord will rise, and his glory will appear upon you. Nations will stream to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawning. Your gates will always be open. By day or night they will never be shut. They will call you the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Violence will no more be heard in your land, ruin or destruction within your borders. You will call your walls salvation and all your portals praise. The sun will no more be your light by day. By night you will not need the brightness of the moon. The Lord will be your everlasting light and your God will be your glory. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. And in our Gospel reading for today, we're in the Gospel of St. John, we're going to begin chapter 11 and read from verse 1 through verse 16. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill, so the sisters sent a message to Jesus, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, this illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you, and are you going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble, because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble, because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake I am glad that I was not there, so that you may believe, but let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second canticle for today is on page 92, the Song of Zechariah. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. On page 96, let's say the Apostles' Creed. 
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. <coughs> the Lord be with you. And now let's pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now on page 97, let's say suffrages A. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. And our collect for today is the collect for proper 18 on page 233. Grant us, O Lord, to trust in you with all our hearts, for as you always resist the proud who confide in their own strength, so you never forsake those who make their boast of your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And on page 100, the Collect for Grace. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin, nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And on page 101, the prayer for mission. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross, that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Amen. And on page 102, the prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And before we go to reflection, I have one more thing to say about Antioch of Syria that I can't believe I forgot to say. And that is, that was the place where Christians were first called Christians. That's a, a nice little note about Antioch. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.